Hiya, I'm Siobhan, part of the team here at Zenkit, and today I want to show you how you can move from Trello to Zenkit in one click to gain greater insight into your work. So Trello is a great place to start structuring projects and data. You can add team members to tasks, add labels to help categorize your data, and move your tasks along as your project progresses. However, it does have some limitations. I'll show you how you can get past those limitations and bring your project to a whole new level with Zenkit. What we're looking at here is the Zenkit homepage as a completely new user. The great thing is I can import my Trello boards with just a click so I can get working right away. I'm not going to add them to my personal collections, however, because I want to create a team to work together with them. So let's create a Mars mission team. A team is essentially a workspace. So in Trello, it's a workspace. In Zenkit, it's a team. To import my Trello board, I just click on the Add New Collection button, click Import from Trello, and choose my board and start import. So now we've got our Trello board perfectly imported into Zenkit. You can see that it follows the same structure as the original board, and it has all of your labels and members intact. If we take a quick look around the collection, here you'll find the menu for switching tools or views. Here's the filter so that you can search through your items. And here you can edit your collection or team settings. The first new feature I want to show you is something that you can do without making a single change to your data. If you click on the view switching menu here, then on options, you can change the headers you use for your Kanban list to any label or even member field. This is great if you want to see how your project looks from a completely different perspective. What Zenkit has done here is that it's taken the labels that you applied in Trello and put them into a label field called labels. So now what you're looking at is your project in order of priority instead of progress. You can see that some of the labels aren't, uh, some of the cards aren't labeled yet. So you can just drag and drop them to apply a label. Once you're done, you can hide this list. The great thing about this is that you're not just restricted to two label fields. You can create as many as you need. Let me just show you quickly how. Say you want to create a label that shows task urgency. Click on an item to open it, then click on the three dot icon to add a new field. In this case, a label field. Give your new label field a name, then add labels to it. While I'm adding fields, let's create another one that shows the estimated duration of a task. So I can show you another trick in a minute. Let's call it time. And choose a format. Okay, you can enter new data directly into the item itself. And you can do this for any number of items inside your collection. And you can see now when I open the view options menu, our new label field urgency is there. And again, the tasks that haven't been given an urgency label are shown on the left and you can move them across as you would in a normal Kanban board. As I move items between lists, you'll see this little number at the top changing. This currently shows the number of items inside that label, but it can also be updated to show a sum of any number field inside that label. So currently it'll show 26 because that is the total of 23 and three days estimated to complete th these two tasks. If I add a time estimate to Mars City, it'll be updated here. This is a fantastic way to track more information about your projects. You can see how many tasks are still to do, calculate the total cost of your project so far, or see how many hours or days worth of work have been assigned to different members. So now you've had a quick look at Zenkit's approach to Kanban, let me show you the other tools you can use. 
If I click on the View menu and click Table, we'll see each task in a spreadsheet. The great thing about this switch is that if you're working on the exact same data, you now have all the powerful features of spreadsheet too, like being able to use inline editing, sorting of any field, and being able to view the total or average amounts for certain fields. You'll notice that the different fields on the Kanban cards are now shown as columns in the table. It's important to note that if you add a field to any item, it'll be added to every single item in the collection. This makes a lot of sense if you think about it, because when you have a collection like this, everything in it is an item of the same type a task, a customer, idea, bug, report, whatever you want. And items of the same type usually have the same properties. So in this collection, items are tasks, and each will have a time estimate, a due date, a person it's assigned to, and a priority. Another view in Zenkit is the calendar. New here is the column of unscheduled items. It's pretty intuitive to use. Whenever you have unscheduled tasks, they show up in this column and you can just drag and drop them to schedule them. If you don't need to see this column, you can just hide it by clicking the X button. It's always there when you need it again. And lastly, we come to list view. List view is perfect if you just want a straightforward list of every item in your collection. You can still see all the information about your items. Or you can keep things really simple by dialing back the level of detail shown on the cards. Sometimes it helps to get a clutter-free look at your project. For example, you could use it as a really simple personal to-do list within your project. Just use the filter to find tasks that are assigned only to you. It's that simple. So you've now had a quick look at what Zenkit can do, but we've only really touched the surface. Stay tuned for more videos about how to use Zenkit's advanced filters, bulk actions, formulas, and references to create a powerful database as easily as adding items to a to-do list. See you then.